Hi, my name's Samantha Byrne. I'm the mayor of the city of Mooney Valley. Some of you have seen the video where Isaac challenged me on what to put in the various bins. Well, now it's my turn to exact revenge on you, Isaac. So I have a few questions to ask you. What do you reckon? Awesome. Let's give Let's it a shot. It. Sounds good. Let's do this. Okay, Isaac, first question. How much rubbish does Mooney Valley produce each week? Is it A, 255 tonnes? B, 358 tonnes, C, 454 tonnes, or D, 551 tonnes? Oh, that's a hard one. Maybe, I'm thinking probably D. Close. The answer is C, 454 tonnes. Next question. How much of Mooney Valley's recycled materials end up in landfill due to contamination? Is it A, 5%, B, 9%, C, 18% or D, 28%? I'm going to lock in D again. 28%. Lock it in? Yep. You sure of your answer? Yep. The correct answer is C, 18%. Okay, Isaac, question number three. What microelements can be found in the fish we eat? Is it A, microaluminium, B, microgranite, C, microplastics, or D, microsteel? I'm thinking microplastics. You gonna lock in answer C? I sure am. Correct. Do you have any more information on that? Well, microplastics is the breaking down of plastic materials. Fish can see them as food to eat, and then when we eat the fish, we're actually digesting the microplastics as well. Next question. Each year, 24 billion tonnes of fertile soil is lost to erosion. Roughly how many years of topsoil does the world have left? Is it A, six years, B, 60 years, C, 600 years, or D, 6,000 years? I'm thinking B, 60 years. Do you want to lock that in? Yep. Well done, Isaac. That's correct, 60 years. By the year 2027, it is estimated Mooney Valley will produce how many tonnes of waste each year? Is it A, 47,000 tonnes? B, 53,000 tonnes, C, 57,000 tonnes, or D, 59,000 tonnes? I'm going to lock in A. You sure you want to lock it in? Yeah. The yes, answer is C, 57,000 tonnes. The next question, how many water bottles are purchased around the world every minute? Is it A, 100,000, B, 500,000, C, 750,000, or D, 1 million? I'm going to lock in 500,000. The correct answer is D, 1 million. That's a lot, isn't it? That is a lot. Okay, the next question. Plastic bags can take up to 1,000 years to decompose. What is the average usage time of a plastic bag? Is it A, 12 minutes, B, 12 hours, C, 12 days, or D, 12 weeks? Probably, I'm going to lock in A, 12 minutes. You sure you want to lock that in? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's correct. 12 minutes. In a single year, how much food do Australians throw in the bin? Is it A, $2 billion worth? B, $4 billion worth? C, $6 billion worth? Or D, $8 billion worth? I'm going to lock in C. The correct answer is in fact D. Oh, wow. $8 billion worth. Thanks so much for joining me today, Isaac. It is so great to see kids like you so passionate about this topic because at the end of the day, you are our future. Thank you, it's my pleasure to be here.
Welcome everyone to the ordinary meeting of council for the 25th of February 2020, which I now declare open. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to members of the very full public gallery tonight who have joined us, as well as those who are watching from home on the internet. Thank you for coming along. As well as being live streamed, the video recording of this meeting will also be available on our website, so attendees in the gallery are advised that their presence may be recorded. Um, I ask that mobile phones be switched off to silent mode during the meeting, please. Um, however, before I go any further, I would like to respectfully acknowledge the land on which we are meeting, that of the Wurundjeri Wurrung people of the Kulin Nation, and pay my respects to their elders past, present and future. I would also like to extend this respect to any other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who are here in the gallery tonight. Now, councillors, I do want to um, just remind for those, I suppose we can all see, that Councillor Lawrence is on his approved leave of absence for tonight. However, we also have, um, I've also received a request for an approved leave of absence from Councillor Sarais for the period of 29th of April to the 26th of May 2020. So can I please have a motion that Councillor Sarais' leave be approved? Move Councillor Marshall. Seconded Councillor Gauci Marucci. Put that to the vote. All those in favour? That is unanimous. Now, councillors, I'd like to alert you in terms of confirmation for minutes. I'd like to alert you to an error in the minutes on the 11th of February relating to agenda item 10.2. For Beaver Street, Aberfeldy. The planning permit application number should read MV 309 2019. Can I please have a mover and seconder that the minutes from the ordinary meeting of council held on Tuesday, the 11th of February 2020, be confirmed with this amendment? Moved Councillor Sarais, seconded Councillor Saipek. I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? That is unanimous. Declarations of conflict of interest. Does any councillor have a conflict of interest on any item on the agenda tonight? Councillor Marshall? Uh, yes, I'm going to declare a conflict of interest in relation to item 10.3 because of a direct interest for reasons disclosed to the CEO in writing before the meeting. Thank you, Councillor Marshall. Does I any... have a sorry conflict of interest too, please, Madam Mayor. Um, 10.3 as well due to uh, residential amenity. Thank you, Councillor Sharp. Does any other councillor have any items on the agenda that they would wish to declare a conflict? No. Now, presentations. So, this is one very exciting presentation that I get to tell everyone about tonight. Um, so, this is to do with our Flemington Works project, which I'm sure there's a lot of, well, I'm sure everyone sitting around um, the chamber has heard about it, but also a lot of people in the gallery tonight. Um, so last week, uh, we're the winner of the Institute of Public Administration Australia's Victoria Leadership in the Public Sector Award for Human Centred Service Delivery for our Flemington Works project. So the award was received at a ceremony um, which took place last week in a highly competitive field. Um, which is obviously a testament to the quality of the program and its participants. And we'd like to take this opportunity to sincerely thank our project funder, the Victorian Government's Department of Jobs, Precincts and Regions, and also to our local member, Danny Pearson, member for Essendon, for his invaluable support. We also congratulate the participating community members and council staff. This project is a three-way partnership between council, the Victorian Government and community. So here is what we received, which is um, very exciting um, and I'd also thank, I know the last, the previous mayors have done a lot of advocacy um, work in this space so um, hopefully we get some good announcement come the state um, budget time so that would be great. So that's that. Okay, now councillors are there any other presentations for tonight? Um, and we haven't received any pa petitions or joint letters, so that leads me on to public question time. Now, we have received questions from seven community members tonight. Uh, for those watching, Baha'i, um, watching from home, um, I will advise that some of the community members are asking questions this evening have indicated that they prefer not to be on the live streaming. Um, so they are here in the, the gallery, but when you're just seeing councillors, um, 
they are here. So that was a re as a request, there's nothing wrong with the feed. Um, but first I will invite Rose Iser to come to the lectern and read her first question. Thank you, Rose. Thanks very much, Mayor. I have two questions uh, related to um, the Flemington Hub. First question, last year there was considerable angst across the Flemington community when council officers recommended spending 65 million on the Flemington Hub and Debney's Park precinct. Council decided to allocate 45 million on the precinct, dividing this into 20 million dollars for the hub and 25 million for the precinct in the longer term and seek 20 million dollars from external funding. Given that no external funding seems to be forthcoming, would it be financially feasible for Council to reallocate $10 million from the $25 million funding pool to allocate $30 million for the construction of the Flemington Hub, leaving $15 million for external works with the additional $5 million for stormwater harvesting and to amend tonight's resolution regarding the Flemington Hub to reflect this? Thank you, Rose. Um, I'll ask Vincent Kamal, the General Manager of City Development, to respond, please, Vincent. Thank you. Through the Mayor, the 20 million spend currently being planned for is as defined and directed by elected members by resolution at the General Council meeting held 11th June 2019. Council has also allocated additional funds for detailed design and tendering processes. Thank you. Thank you, Vincent. Um, Rose, would you like to ask your second question, please? My second question uh, begins by thanking um, Council for responding to community concern about last year's <coughs> excuse me, proposed location and for including in tonight's report a recommendation that the Flemington Hub be built adjacent to the current community hub and the existing sports pavilion adjoining the current car park. My question is, would it be possible to include this specific reference to location in the recommendation itself at point A? Thank you, Rose. And again, I'll ask Vincent Kamal to respond. Thank you. Through the Mayor, there is a report before Council tonight about the Flemington Community Hub, and it will be a matter for the Council if it wishes to make a change to the recommendation in the report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vincent. I'd now like to invite Frey Carlton to come to the lectern to read her first question. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, in acknowledging that the proposal of MV 320 exceeds the preferred height within Design and Development Overlay Schedule 3, and that the proposal does not meet rear setback requirements on land that abuts a general residential zone, how has Council taken into account concerns from Richardson Street residents about an unreasonable loss of amenity from the construction of a 23.8 metre building with 13 west-facing balconies that overlook not a park like the developments on the east side of Mount Alexander Road but existing Richardson Street homes. Thank you, Freya. I will ask for Vera, the Senior Coordinator in Statutory Planning to respond, please. Thank you, Mayor. The overall height of the building and proposed setback to the Western property are considered to be an acceptable response to design and development overlay, Schedule 3, its commercial one zone and site context. The building has been sufficiently set back and designed to limit visual bulk impact. The balconies within the western elevation are screened to height of 1.7 meters above finished floor level to limit any unreasonable overlooking impact into the adjoining properties. Thank you, Vera. Freya, I'll ask you to ask your next question, please. Thank you. Uh, why is Council approving multiple rear balconies at low levels that directly face into homes on Richardson Street, a general residential zone? when high rear walls at the back of new apartments at 973 Mount Alexander Road and 95 Rose Street, Essendon, provide better noise and privacy protection to residents of Richardson Street and Flower Street whose homes border those developments. 
Thank you. And I'll ask for Vera to please respond. Thank you, Mayor. The balconies within the western elevation rear are screened to height of 1.7 meters about finished floor level to limit any unreasonable overlooking impact into the adjoining properties. Every site has individual site contest that influence the build form of the development, which is then assessed on its individual matters. There will not be no unreasonable noise impact as a result of the development above that type on an established urban area. Thank you, Vera. And thank you, Freya. Thank you. I'll now invite John Kite to come to the lectern to ask his first question. <coughs> Uh, I'm to uh, resident uh, Richardson Street, just for the background. My question relates to the planning application of uh, MV302-19 at 957 Mount Alexander Road. So the design and development overlay schedule uh, notes a height of 18 metres, however the process proposed building is 23.8 metres, incorporates a six storey plus one additional lift and stairwell to communal area, effectively making a seven storey construction from a physical structure point of view. The seven storey has a large core running through the building which has a lift and stairway that provides access to a large communal area purely as compensation for the reduced area balconies which is detrimental to the existing restaurants for its poor articulation design. Why is Mooney Valley Council endorsing design that has a building height 5.8 metres over recommended guidelines? So again I will ask um, Vera, the Senior Coordinator of Statutory Planning, to answer your question. Thank you, Mayor. Council officer has assessed the proposal, proposed height of the development against the provision of design and development overlay Schedule 3, decision guidelines of commercial one zone and its its site context and consider the height to be an appropriate response. Thank you, Vera. John, would you like to ask your second question, please? It supports the first question, but puts it in another perspective, council members. So the average height of the 12 existing recently built residential developments that are referred to in the development advertised plans are actually an average of 4.4, an average of 4.41 storeys. Now, I, I call that approximately about 15.8 metres in height. Therefore, the development itself has a height of 23.8 metres, which is far greater than the 8 metres higher than existing buildings. So the question is, why is Mooney Valley Council considering endorse bulk mass design that has a direct impact on the health amenity of the existing property owners in Richardson Street and corresponding to uh, neighbours in Mount Alexander Road? Thank you, John. Vera? Thanks, Mayor. Council officers has assessed the proposed development against the provision of the design and development overlay schedule three, decision guidelines of the commercial one zone and its site context and considered that the build form has appropriate managed to the impacts upon the amenity of the joining properties in relation to visual bulk overlooking and overshadowing. Thank you. Thank you. I'll now invite Kathy Kite to please come to the lectern. Thank you, Mayor. My question relates to the planning application MV 300-2019 at 957 Mount Alexander Road, Essendon. Can the council please explain the proposal in the context of the existing residential properties currently occupying 949 to 953 as well as 963 Mount Alexander Road and detail how these setbacks are sufficient to, over, to avoid overlooking and the visual bulk issues for these existing properties. Thank you, Cathy, for your question. Vera, if you'd like to Thanks, respond, Mayor. Yes. The development has been set back appropriately from the north and southern boundaries having regard to its location within the commercial one zone, provision of design and development overlay schedule three and its context, site context. 
balconies and habitable room windows within the southern elevation facing 949 to 953 Mount Alexander Road are appropriately screened to a height of 1.7 meters above finish floor level to limit unreasonable overlooking opportunities. The balconies and habitable room windows within the northern elevation facing 961 and 963 Mount Alexander Road are not screened as the adjoining properties at 961 Mount Alexander Road is a medical center and the overall distance between proposed development and private open space area of 963 Mount Alexander Road are well in exceed of 9 meters. As such, as such, there is no unreasonable overlooking impact to proposed properties. To those properties, sorry. Thanks. Thank you, Vera. And Cathy, would you like to ask your second question, please? Thank you, Mayor. Please explain the overlooking and visual bulk aspects that the proposal creates for 38, 40 and 42 Richardson Street to the west of the proposal, noting that there was not a revised shadow diagram done in the revised plans that were issued on Friday. Thank you. Thanks, Vera, are you happy to respond? The overall height of the building and the proposed setback to the western property are considered to be an acceptable response to design and development overlay schedule three, its commercial one zone and site context. The building has been successfully set back and designed to limit visual bulk impacts. The balconies within the western elevation are screened to height of 1.7 meters above finish floor level to limit any unreasonable overlooking impact into the adjoining properties. Thank you, Vera. Thank you for your questions, Cathy. I will now invite Beth Kite to the lectern to ask her question. Thank you, Mayor. Why is the proposed development removing a facility that provides much needed respite place for our ageing population? What are the provisions for the existing residents and how does the Council reconcile endorsing this town planning application for a residential development? Thank you. I will ask for Vera to respond. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Mayor. The subject site is privately owned and existing use of development of the site is not a planning consideration, is assessment of the proposed development of this site. The assessment of the application is limited to the response to the relevant provision of the Muni Valley Planning Scheme. Thank you. Thank you. I will now invite Chris Kite to please come to the lectern to ask his first question. Uh, my first question, how could the ordinary articulation and material changes of the proposal be improved to reduce the proposal's large size and bulkiness? Thank you, Chris. I'll ask for Vera to respond. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Condition 1C, which states the performance screen to the front facade to the reduce in height to no more than 1.5 meters, has been included within the recommendation to the use screening elements within the front elevation to reduce the perce perception of the built form to the streetscape. Condition 1A requires alteration to the building to an accordance with the submission submitted uh, without producers' plans. These conditions are appropriate and sufficient to reduce visual dominance presented to the streetscape and adjoining properties. Thank you, Vera. Chris, would you like to ask your second question, please? Thank you. Explain how the proposed development at 957 Mount Alexander Road, Essendon, has incorporated the new Green Start design as built V1.3. 
Thank you, Vera. Thanks, Mayor. The permit applicant prepared a sustainable management plan, including a best report for the application. Council's ESD officer has reviewed this report and supports development, subject to condition which has been included. Green Star is an alternative tool that can be used to undertake an environmental sustainable design assessment. Thank you very much, Vera. I will now invite Michael Whelan to come to the lectern to ask his questions. Thank you, Michael. Good afternoon, councillors. Uh, my questions are in relation to the North Park Estate, or currently, or also known as St uh, Columban's uh, Mission on Woodland Street. Um, my question is: uh, Would currently, sorry, I should say the uh, the owners of the property have actually got? Um, uh, an application, a permit application at Heritage Victoria. So my question is, would Council consider submitting an objection to Heritage Victoria? Thank you, Michael. I will again ask for Vera um, to answer. Thank you, Mayor. Council is aware of application lodged to Heritage Victoria by the owners of North Park East Estate, formerly known as 45 to 69 Woodland Street, Stratmore. Council Statutory Planning Department has received a formal referral from Heritage Victoria for comments on the application, and the report will be prepared for Council's consideration. Thank you very much. And Michael, did you have a second and question? I, I do have a second question, which is, would the council consider buying the property for community use? Vera, would you like to respond? Thank you. Thanks, Mayor. That will be a matter for council to decide. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I can't ask any more questions. Not at this stage, but we do have many meetings for you to ask further questions. Okay, now we don't have any reports from special committees tonight, so that does bring us to the part of the agenda, the reports. So the first report on tonight's agenda is a planning application at 957 Mount Alexander Road, Essendon, land in PC1667. 33E construction of a multi-storey mixed-use building in a design and development overlay schedule three and alterations to access in road zone category one. Councillors, do I have a motion? Councillor Gauchimarici. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to move the officer's recommendation with an additional condition. So I'd like to insert at one S, please the deletion of level three with no change in the setbacks of the upper levels as a result of the deletion ensuring the maximum height is not greater than 18 meters thank you councillor gatchmichi that was rest as is yes? yes yes do i have a second for that motion Councillor Marshall. Councillor Gouch Marici, would you like to speak on the motion? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, there have obviously been a number of questions from residents, so I'm sure that those watching from home have an awareness of some of the concerns, but the concerns that I personally have with the application um, are primarily around the significant height over the preferred maximum height. Um, around the setbacks, um, some of the screenings which have been already conditioned in the planner's recommendations, um, the overshadowing. Uh, particularly for me, I think some of these concerns can be alleviated by reducing the height. It reduces the overshadowing. Um, it improves some of the non-compliant setbacks. For me, the real touch point is that impact on the neighbouring residential interfaces. Um, and I think that the proposed additional condition reduces some of that impact. Um, as much as I um, have other views on the development itself, there are things that are not planning considerations and are not ours to make decisions about styles and screening type and those sorts of things. Um, the proposal itself is 
adequately compliant. There's the other things that we normally get really frustrated by have been addressed. Um, so for me, the real concern was about that height and how that height and setbacks impact on those neighbouring residents. Um, and I am hopeful that if we can include the additional condition, um, that that will reduce that impact. I'm mindful that um, in the application, there was reference to a number of other six storey buildings in the area, um, which as the um, earlier information provided, that's not the case as two there, neither of which were directly approved by council. So um, certainly my preference is for us to comply with the preferred height of 18 metres. Thank you, Councillor Gouch Marici. Councillor Marsh, would you like to speak on the item? Uh, I have been very consistent over time in expressing my strong preference to have applications comply with preferred heights. And as I've also said previously, this council has paid the price where it has gone out and approved developments which have exceeded preferred heights. Uh, so the reality is that given Mount Road, given the controls that there will be a development here, um, it will be a significant development, but bringing it within the, uh, the preferred height, keeping those setbacks at the top levels so you're not bringing any of the, uh, the development forward, I think is a compromise in this situation. Many of the other issues of concern that have been raised have actually been addressed via conditions. So I think to the extent that they can be mitigated, they have been. And as Councillor Gauchi Marucci has noted, we have to consider planning matters and relevant matters. Uh, so even though there may be times where there are issues of concern to neighbours which are absolutely well-founded and valid, uh, we can only legitimately consider planning matters. So uh, that's probably all I need to say. Thank you, Councillor Marshall. Would any other councillor like to speak on this motion? Councillor Sharp. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Look, the proposal before us tonight, there's obviously a lot of emotion around this application and there was certainly a degree of concern shown by residents at the consultation meeting that we held last year. Um, I would like to acknowledge the issues raised by residents surrounding this proposal, but um, I should speak about a number of issues, I suppose, and Mount Alexander Road is certainly changing. Um, I'm certainly the first person to state that I don't always agree with such changes, but back in uh, 2012, the zoning along Mount Road was changed um, to allow for commercial activity along the stretch from the, by the government at the time uh, because of its location to public transport. So following this rezoning, we worked very hard as a council to adopt a design and development overlay to ensure appropriate development occurred along this stretch and some councillors around the table um, would remember that time vividly, I'm sure, and the fight that we had to get increased setbacks for developments that abutted a residential or sensitive interface. Um, it's certainly always challenging to achieve a good balance when a commercial zone abuts a residential zone and that's obviously what we have here. Um, I know many concerns centre around the height and the bulk and there's certainly no getting away from the fact that the proposal is over our preferred height by 5.8 metres. Um, I've argued many times about the need to comply with DDO3 and we have refused a number of applications only for them to be uh, approved by VCAT. So for me, compliance with the setbacks of the DDO3 are to a degree, the most important is the setbacks can really affect the neighbouring properties. So um, the battle, in my mind, is just ensuring that re there's no loss of residential amenity. So I do understand residents are very upset at the proposal, and it, certainly if we had a trigger that we could use, being uh, that we're at saturation point here in Mooney Valley, I reckon we would have used it years ago. And I don't think anyone would have a, an argument for that. Um, but we don't have the trigger, so deciding on planning applications is probably the hardest aspect, one of the hardest aspects of our roles on council. And I can state that we certainly don't take any decision lightly. But we can't refuse developments because we don't like them. It's about considering the relevant planning provisions and strategic plans that direct where development should be built. Mount Alexander Road is designated for higher density development, and most of us don't want to see that development. But high density development has been earmarked and council has to manage this as best we can. 
I thank Councillor Gacchimucci for her alternative to delete a level on the development. I'm cons but considering the other proposals where uh, Council has been deleted the level or a level, um, they've pretty much all been knocked back by VCAT at great cost to Council and our ratepayers. So um, I'm not convinced that deleting a level will achieve a better development. So um, I'm still deciding. I'm happy to hear what other councillors say, but this is certainly an application that is is difficult. Um, happy to hear other thoughts, but um, I've foreshadowed a an alternative. If it doesn't thank get you, thank Councillor you. Sharp. Would any other councillor like to speak on this application, Councillor Nation? Thank you, Mayor. I'll keep it pretty brief. I won't be supporting the motion before us. Uh, three simple reasons. Um, the height of the development, not as per the recommendation, but as per the officer's recommendation, uh, is above the preferred height for the DDO3. Front setbacks exceed the minimum setback requirements under DDO3, and it fails to comply with the rear setbacks as well. I appreciate Councillor Gauchamirici putting up this uh, alternative, but I don't think it's our job as councillors to try to rework people's developments to make them comply with the rules of our planning scheme. They either present something that's compliant or they present something that's not compliant. Um, in my view, this is not compliant, uh, so I won't be supporting the motion before us. Thank you, Councillor Nation. Would any other councillor like to speak? Councillor Sipag. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I've been on council for a very long time and I've seen a lot of applications come, a lot of applications go. Some have been passed, some have been refused and some have gone to VCAT. And my concern is when applications go to VCAT, they get taken out of council's hands. And if they get taken out of council's hands, that means all bets are off, all conditions are off, everything comes off everything can completely change and we have no say as a council. As long as we have control of it, we can then determine what the act actual application could be processed. And I just want to give you an example. Does, does everyone remember at uh, 1003 to 1005 Mount Alexander Road where the church was and you had that Borg cube that was built behind it? Well, council refused that one and it went to VCAT and VCAT took all the conditions off. So a reduction in car parking requirements was deleted, um, associated with the use of the land for the purpose of shops. The dwellings, there was a waiver of the loading zone for there as well, and that was um, a direction from VCAT for council to issue a permit. 1032 to 1036, the same thing. Um, went to VCAT, and VCAT um, determined that the design was quite happy and all the conditions were taken off. 1048 to 1060 Mount Alexander Road went to VCAT for a seven storey dwelling accommodation. We refused it, it came back with seven storeys. 1.12 metres in height reduction, also a reduction in car parking as well. So when it goes to VCAT, ladies and gentlemen, everything comes off and it could, you just, and like an old um, colleague of ours, um, said to me once, he goes, be careful what you wish for because VCAT might just not grant it to you. And, um, and just as a closing argument, I, every time I come to council, I always have a vivid sign every time I come here and think about planning applications. And it's right across the road over there, the Caden project. We had 22 stories on the table and we knocked it back, went to VCAT and we got 30 stories. And every time I come to council, that's all I think of when I think of planning applications. Do I want to go to VCAT or does council need to control this? And if, it, if we can control it, fantastic. I think that's the best option that we have. Our officers work very, very hard to put as many conditions on there. So I'm just very worried that if it goes to VCAT, we might not get what we want. Thank you, Councillor Sipek. Would any other councillor like to speak? Councillor Sarais. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, just in observation and from the questions that were raised from the residents here this evening, as council's parking and traffic uh, portfolio holder, I can just see residents are ringing me and saying there's no parking and we've got too much traffic and everything else happening. Where do we actually draw the line about making these decisions? And as Councillor Sharp has said, it is really difficult for us to make these decisions because 
at the end of the day, either the residents or the council or the developers go to VCAT and there are instances where there can be changes. From council's point of view and our officers that give us these reports, they put in conditions and they try to make alternative arrangements and compromises to get a better outcome, even though it's not what we want to see in the long term. In relation to what Councillor Sipek said, I think it was the minister that called in that, 30, that 22 story and it was the minister that made that decision on the 30 story development, which we don't like either. I mean, Mooney Ponds is just an eyesore. Um, I don't, I don't think that many of us want to see a huge amount of further development, as Councillor Marshall said, in our municipality. It is something that we don't want to really have happen, but we have to deal with it. Um, I can't support, even with the reduction of a story, I can't support this development because I think that the more that we can continue to say we've had enough and we've got enough here, we might get that opportunity and chance that that might just be the situation. I agree with one of the questions earlier about a retirement lodge being removed and now more uh, residential development taking place, which has a higher impact on traffic and roads and transport. I mean, the tram can only hold so many people as the trains do, and they are pretty dense by the time they get to these stops. So the reality of it is, yes, it does have an effect on the amenity and the well-being of the existing residents, and those residents that will go into these proposed units as well. So for those reasons, I can't support the motion. Thank you, Councillor Sarais. Councillor Cusack. In for a penny, in for a pound. Um, <laughs> the concern that I have, and when I read the officer's report, is that, um, let's put aside the amenity question for a minute, is that we've got a development here that's highly compliant, and that's a real issue for us. The, um, the harsh reality is that it also falls under the DDO, therefore it will always be a site that's subject to some development. So the truth, what we're aiming to do through this motion is to bring it back at least within the DDO. There's concern, and I think it's a justified concern, about whether VCAT would uh, entertain uh, this if it was appealed or not. I get a sense that there is always a level of ambit in some of these planning proposals, whether you're prepared to roll the dice completely and take it to VCAT and think that you're going to get under five is um, an interesting call. We've had a couple of surprises down in our neck of the woods in, um, in Mount Alexander Road on the corner of Mascoma Street in Ascot Vale, in particular where a very large development, about eight storeys, was brought down to five. However, the footprint for that was significantly less than what we're talking about for this building. The footprint for the other one on the corner of Warwick Street, which was also reduced significantly, uh, was only just over 300 square metres. You're talking about three times that. And uh, so we have, you have a serious balancing act. Uh, I'm inclined to support the motion. I don't think that there's enough in there for, for me to suggest that whoever is an advocate on behalf of council can run a really seriously strong case that won't get, in, well, won't go past that negotiated outcome stuff. And a lot of those negotiated outcomes will be around the edges, at least in this position, we've got a, posi uh, a position that says we're settling for nothing less than what the DDO says. Um, and there's no comfort in that, and what I've said for uh, residents, I'm terribly sorry, but it's uh, also, that's what's happening in Mount Alexander Road. If we don't keep some of this building on those main drags, it will go into your neighbourhoods faster and quicker than you think. And we already know that that's happened to some degree in Richardson Street. We know there's leakage off Mount Road up in your neck of the woods. It's happening significantly in our area. And uh, the only way we've been able to corral it somewhat is by keeping it on the main drag. Thank you, Councillor Cusack. Councillor Gatchmarici. 
for a close. Um, thank you. I will close briefly. Um, thank you to the other councillors for all your feedback. There's obviously a lot of interesting viewpoints. Um, I think the position that's been posed is indeed a compromise. It is about trying to be pragmatic about what is an achievable outcome that respects the residents' right to amenity, still allows the block to be developed in a large fashion, but make sure it's compromised. Um, from where I'm at, there are other alternatives are to approve the officer's recommendations as it is, which is 24 metres high, or to have a refusal, which I don't think would get up. So for me, this is literally a compromise that tries to protect the interests of the residents and keep our preferred maximum height as our preferred maximum height. Thank you, Councillor Gacchimarici. I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? That's Councillor Marshall, Councillor Gacchimarici, Councillor Cusack, Councillor Byrne. All those against? Councillor Serace, Councillor Saipek, Councillor Sharp, Councillor Nation. And that is passed on the casting vote of the Mayor. Item 10.2 on the agenda is the Flemington Community Hub Renewal Project. Councillors, do I have a motion? Um, Councillor Cusack. Mayor, I'd like to uh, move the officer's recommendation in uh, broad substance, but there are some amendments to it that I would like to add. And um, I don't know whether the... Uh, the fairies have been working their wand with the uh, word processor or not. I guess they seem to have been. Uh, those amendments are, are up there. But for the purposes of uh, people who are listening, I, have, I know that I'm required to read the whole lot out. Thank you, Councillor Cusack. If you could um, please read out the... Well, draw your breath, folks. Um, so... I proceed with delivering a new Flemington Community Hub at Debney's Park on council land, uh, own land, which is option B in the report. B, endorse the design of the Flemington Community Hub based on the following broad inclusions and ensure that in providing appropriate spaces for use by the whole community, that the requirements for people from diverse cultures are included and that the Flemington Community Hub specifically includes a dedicated space to foster employment opportunities for the development of micro-businesses and other vocational initiatives. The new Flemington Community Hub will include... Yeah, that was me fixing up the grammar. Um, one, community hall and a range of multi-purpose rooms of different sizes. Two, display areas for art exhibitions and installations in a foyer space. Three, kitchen, cafe, kiosk that also facilitate and augment vocational training. Training rooms, art room, wet and dry space, offices, storage spaces. Sorry, I'm not saying the numbers, am I? Okay. Uh, number eight, after all of that, is dedicated spaces provided for uh, children, youth and older people and special interest groups that require specific space, example, a prayer room. Nine is consultation suites. And ten uh, is where I've made some substantive changes and additions from here on. Uh, sport pavilion spaces to service uh, out the, the two outdoor fields that are accessible for people of all ages, abilities, cultural backgrounds and sex. Design that optimises uh, the connection of the building to its outside surrounds by creating varied access entrance points to maximise its use by community and special interest groups. Uh, Twelve, incorporate renewable energy materials and landscape design within the building design to maximise environmental and sustainable outcomes and extend the use of the building as an accessible model for the promotion of these design principles in other large and small developments and houses. 13. Ensuring that the technology specified for the building supports high level 
communication and digital technology and that this is accessible both indoors and outdoor to maximise activation of these spaces. That's noting that, all multi, uh, that the multi-purposing of spaces in the hub will require lighting, power and technology installation to support a variety of complex events such as theatre performances, art installations and meetings of various sizes and purposes. Uh, 14. The design response must address and maximise community safety in addition to those mandated by legislation. And finally, the design of the building inside and outside will be welcoming and respectful uh, and a respectful place for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and the diverse communities and cultures of Inner Melbourne. C provides 1.454 million in the 2021 Capital Works Program to uh, allow awarding of architectural services tender. D, consult and keep the community informed throughout the cons concept design phase, ensuring uh, project communications are designed to encourage information to be easily shared across the community, particularly those living on the Flemington housing estate and other marginalised or disadvantaged individuals and groups. E, authorise the Chief Executive Officer to award the contract for the provision of architectural consultancy services for the Flemington Community Hub. And F, continue Council's advocacy for this project to engage state and federal representatives to access opportunities for funding and support. Thank you, Councillor Cusack. Do I have a second for the motion? Councillor Sorace. Councillor Cusack, would you like to speak on the motion? Um, thank you, Mayor. Uh, so where we've arrived now is that the process to create the hub uh, following the decisions that were made at the uh, budget meeting in June last year to slash its funding. Two options have been developed and uh, considered, and you'll be able to read about those in the uh, budget paper, uh, in the paper uh, that, is, uh, tent that is associated with this uh, motion. They were A, to look at a DHS, HHS partnership, or B, for council uh, to use land uh, its own land and uh, and to progress the uh, the hub on that space. The uh, decision to go with uh, B has very specific benefits for council and community in the design, use, operation and timing for the development of this uh, much needed resource in our community. The council paper also outlines funding to flow to take the planning to the design and the and inevitably inevitably at the construction phase you'll find that in paragraph 3.6 which is supported of course by the time frame that is outlined in 3.11 i don't need i don't think i need to go through all of the the uh, points that are in the officer's paper uh, report uh, i think it's fairly self explanatory the additional uh, points that I've added to the uh, uh, officer's recommendation are to ensure some very basic and sensible uh, things occur within the development of the hub. A, that it's a sustainable building, that that is actually an upfront requirement so that the hub will always be and should be, at least in the next 15, 20 years or whatever, a place that is a model for developments of this sort. It also needs to be a place that is protective of our children, youth and older people and specialist groups so that it, it can provide the space when those people go into it who need space to be able to think their way through or be able to use the hub at times of crisis in their lives maybe, but also at times when they need to do reflection. I've included the prayer room, but of course, the number of people that we see that have um, significant issues 
and are accessing our youth services or uh, accessing homeless services or mental health services and so on like that uh, all have all got to be addressed in some way through the hub and you can't just do it out in the middle of a foyer um, no matter how good your consultation is. The Sports Pavilion is pretty straightforward. It needs to be um, one that looks at and, uh, and addresses the expectations of community uh, in 2021. The, uh, the interesting thing is, is that I, I, and I didn't put it in there, but it should be about encouraging as a place uh, active and passive recreation. Um, the notion of the hub being just a building where everybody goes into is a very shaky notion. In 2021, if you're not embracing the outside of buildings, if you're not utilising those walls, if you're not utilising good uh, landscape design and all the rest of it, you're kind of selling yourself short. And of course, we have had already many, many events down at uh, on the estate, which are outside events during the height of summer and all the rest of it. And the existing building is part of all of that. I think that uh, the, the other thing about technology is critical because we need to make sure that uh, we're able to, when we wire up the place and put in new uh, machinery and so on like that, that it can do the job that it's required to do, especially in that multi-purposing area. I want to see this hub to be a safe place for the community with different, because it's got different entrances and exits. Hopefully, therefore, you have different ways of going in and out of the hub, but you have different ways of coming in and being welcomed. And uh, that will also maximise the way people will view it. And finally, it's critical that our buildings in this municipality become those welcoming places for all sorts of people who are often not sure that they should come through the door. So the point about Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders and a welcoming place for cultures of all types in Melbourne is a critical part for the design and concept of this hub. Thank you. Uh, Madam Mayor, I was wondering if I could just ask Councillor Kuzak, would he consider just one more point? To... Um, so we'll... <clears throat> Um, are you moving a... No, just a minor point. Just a minor, minor point. The motion is as it stands, Councillor Seifek. <laughs> Councillor Therese. Can thank you... you thank you, you Madam Mayor. Um, so thank you, Councillor Cusack, for moving that motion and all those inclusions as well. So Council's looking to keep moving the Flemington Hub project forward. Council's been working with DHS for several months to explore what opportunities may exist as part of stage one of the Flemington Housing Estate Renewal Program. So with this, the hub will be located adjacent to the existing car park between the current Flemington Community Centre and Debney's Park Pavilion. The hub will include flexible spaces and include a hall and a range of multi-purpose rooms of different sizes display exhibition and foyer space, kitchen, cafe, kiosk, I'm probably repeating a few of the things that you said, it's in my notes, training rooms, art room with a wet and dry space, offices, storage spaces, licensed children's room, consultation suites, sports pavilion spaces to serve as two outdoor fields. These key elements have been based on extensive community feedback and a thorough needs assessment. These spaces will be designed to be adaptable to a wide range of uses which will be able to change over time to reflect community needs. The advantage of going forward with the Flemington Community Hub on council owned land and controlled land include an influence on design and provision of services, cost effective construction and operational models, ability to integrate with existing car park and internal pathways and facilities, the ability to place the facility to maximise support for sports grounds and ensure easy access for all residents. So the recommendation location also minimises damages to the existing mature trees. So we are committed to delivering this project and we will continue to do that in response to the community feedback. So all I can say is hooray and hurrah. Uh, we're moving forward and uh, this is going to be a win-win situation for all those involved and I think this is a, a, a nice compromise and outcome. Thank you, Councillor Sarais. 
Would any other councillor, Councillor Sipek? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, thank you, Councillor Kuzak, for bringing up this motion. Um, I fully support everything that you've said. And what I, what I, um, well, it, you know, it, it dawned on me about a week ago, but I didn't know whether, you know, it, it would make a significant change. I, rem I remember when I immigrated to Australia back in the late 60s, early 70s, I have memories of visiting friends in the Flemington uh, communities, um, uh, flats there. And uh, there's been waves of generation and there's been a lot of history in that place. And I think a portion of that new building to recognise the history, the heritage, the amount of different communities that have gone through that place, I think would be a great symbol of uh, the diversity of Mooney Valley. And um, I was just hoping maybe Councillor Kuzak could just add that one little extra dot point to have a historical section about where this where these community hub came from, why it was originally put there, and all the community groups that have benefited from it and moved on from it. And there'll be more communities coming through there as well. So I think to have a historical um, uh, section would be would be fantastic. Councillor Sipek, can I suggest, are you moving a amendment? I... That is... Being, um, would be the way to do it if you wanted to have the additional dot point. I, I, I would be happy if uh, Councillor Cusack... So um, Councillor Cusack's the mover of the motion. Okay. I've so if you were to move it and then we could have somebody second it and then sure. we could debate okay. it to add it in. So if you wanted to add in... Just a historical section. So you are moving that, a historical section. Everything with one extra dot point form to have a historical section included in the new building. So under B, potentially 16, or, okay, putting it in there, councillors. So you are moving, Councillor Sipek, the extra dot point in under B to read a, spe a space set aside to recognise the, the history. history of the Flemington community. Yeah. As an amendment, do I have a second enough for that? Uh, the Fleming to uh, to recognise to recognise the history of the Flemington community hub. So you want it? Or the well, the Flemington community will, will community. incorporate everything, won't it? So to confirm, what you are moving is that an addition into B to be a space set aside to recognise the history of the Flemington community. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah. Just community. Now, do I have a seconder for the amendment, Councillor Sharp? Now, Councillor Sipek, would you like to speak on your amendment? Like, like I said, Madam Mayor, it's only just a minor amendment, and um, I think with the Flemington area down there, we've um, like when when I came to Australia, there was the Europeans that went through there, then followed by the Vietnamese, and there have been other communities going through there, and like I said, there'll be more communities coming through there, which, um, which I think is a very important thing. We should remember the history, and we should remember how people have moved on from, from, um, from the flats and moved on to bigger and better things. Um, you know, there've been some, and, and there'll be some great stories coming out of it. And uh, when we do build the new hub there, um, we would have you know, all these communities that would return there for the, for the opening, hopefully. And I think it would be just fantastic to see um, the community groups that have gone through there return for this grand opening. Thank, Thank you, you Councillor Sipet. Councillor Sharp, would you like to Mayor, speak? Can on? I ask a point of clarification? To uh, So given we've got limited space now with the reduced um, size, are you talking even about wall space? So some sort of mural? Because I wouldn't be... It yep. could be just a wall or a big screen TV with a rotating... Right, OK. Just something so like not that. an actual room being dedicated? No, yep. No. OK, thanks. Thank you. No problems. Now, would anybody else like to speak on the amendment? No, I will put just... Oh, sorry, Councillor Gashmirisha, would you like to speak to the amendment? I will briefly on the amendment. I just want to be sure that we clarify somehow that definition of space. I am concerned that in a very limited footprint already, if we were making a room for history or 
I, I would hate to see I would hate to see that interpreted literally, and we end up taking something out of a design that's already quite specific. So okay. I have concerns with it saying just space, so probably that's won't support it as it is. Okay, Councillor Cusack, just speaking on the amendment. Yeah, yeah I might speak to the amendment. Um, Councillor Sipek, I have a lot of sympathy for what you're saying because the question about the whole of the area down there and its history, especially as it gets redeveloped and the and the uh, the flats change and all the rest of it, and we've seen the first lot going in Victoria Street and so on like that, um, does uh, have a, a a strong relevance to what the fabric of the community is. I'm just doubtful about fixing it per se specifically into the into the hub in through this motion. I think that we could address this uh, from a council point of view through uh, projects, uh, community grants. We could look at this through um, our partnership with DHHS who have the other part of that whole area to look at. We could also approach and talk to the Flemington Association who might uh, champion something that actually could be, I don't know, a multilingual book that might be a history of the, the, uh, the hub and all the rest of it. I must say, as a, a final note though, that I do, again, I want to reinforce that I think it's a really, really good idea. I'm just w try. I can't f fathom it in terms of the design and creation of the concept at, of the building at this stage. The next phase, how the business, how the buildings get utilised, and somebody might actually approach the officers down there and say, "Wouldn't it be a great idea to do a history of the hub?" But that would be almost an operational sort of decision and so on like that. I must say, though, that the hub saved my life as a young youth worker on that estate at times and televisions coming from the 20th floor and all the rest of it as you walked along. Uh, the hub was a great place to go and meet clients instead of uh, on, this, on the estate. But uh, I wouldn't have wanted to be there when it was a ballet school. It would have been an ugly sight. Thank you, Councillor Cusack. Madam Mayor, sorry, just a point of clarification. Can you move an amendment sorry. to an amendment? No, cool. Thank you. Would any other councillor like to speak on the amendment? No. I will put just the amendment to the vote. All those in favour? That is Councillor Sarais, Councillor Saipet, Councillor Sharp, Councillor Nation, Councillor Byrne, Councillor Marshall. All those against? Councillor Gauci Marici. And Councillor Cusack. So the amendment has been carried. So we'll now go back to the uh, substantive motion. And I will ask Councillor Saipek, you had finished speaking on the substantive motion. Is that correct? Yes. Well, you moved your amendment halfway through, so I can be lenient. All right, okay. um, Madam Mayor, like I said, this, this wasn't a big issue, but uh, I really think the word community is what we're looking at here. And this, this has gone through a lot of different communities. The word community is the most important part here. Now, we can't just define the history in you know, the last five years. Um, and I'm not talking about taking over you know, the hall or anything like that. It can be just a small, simple pylon in the corner, which even just has like a, like, a, like if you go to any sporting club and you see like a little memorabilia board, you know, this community came through through these years, this community came through through these years. Just a brief, small history, some little portion, little corner. I'm not asking for a room, I'm just asking for... We're back on the substantive Maybe motion. Maybe one square meter. We're, we're back onto the substantive motion, just to be clear, Councillor Sipek. Okay. 
I was just trying to make my point. <laughs> we have supported you. I know, I know, I know. Counselors, but, but, please. But, it, but it, 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 was, it was referred to me like I'm asking for, the, for half the hall to be done. I'm not asking for half the hall. Anyway, happy to support the, the major motion. Thank, Thank you, you Councillor Sipek. Would any other council like to speak on this item? Councillor Marshall. Thank you. I'm sure my mic's on. Um, it's actually a difficult position to be in, I have to say, as a, a councillor. But uh, there's one thing that would be worse than the project budget being cut from $42.5 million to $20 million, and that it is for it to be cut from 20 to zero. Uh, so I'm not going to, as my mum would say, cut off my nose to spite my face, and I will be supporting the motion tonight. Uh, as Councillor Cusack has indicated, this is a council-owned facility on a council-owned and operated facility on council land, and the reality is that there is too much uncertainty in the DHHS timeframes uh, and the way that they will proceed forward for us to sit there and wait when we have a building that is literally falling down. What's clear is the mix of rooms and spaces in the hub still need further thought and consultation. And I did have some concern about the licensed children's space that was initially set out in the what was set out in the officer's recommendation. And that's because council actually got rid of um, the children's space in the existing Flemington Community Centre a few years ago. And uh, I certainly wouldn't want it to be seen as a precursor step for selling off Hopeton at all. So that's something I'd never support. And so I think we need to make sure that we have uh, an appropriate mix of spaces. In terms of the location, one of the absolutely most frustrating things for me last year was that people had said in their mind that the location had been decided. And uh, it absolutely hadn't been decided. And that's why it was just uh, incredibly frustrating and disappointing with the way things played out. But anyway, you can see the proposed location now close to the existing uh, site and uh, it will be two-storey built form just to make sure that we mitigate the impact on open space. In relation to the question that was uh, asked earlier tonight, if I thought that there was any chance at all um, that the budget for this would be supported to be increased to 30 or $40 million, I would absolutely stand up. Uh, but I know it wouldn't be and that would be a pointless exercise. So uh, again, you know, got to be mindful about where things are. And I'll just finish by saying that the process last year for the hub, it was actually an awful process. It was certainly the worst that I've been involved in. It was divisive. And I hope that everyone who's been involved has had the opportunity to reflect on how things played out. I certainly have. And I hope we've all learnt lots of things. And it was certainly for me a stark reminder that the interests of the marginalised and disadvantaged and people who might not necessarily have a voice can be trampled over very easily. And I certainly would say to the young people and the leaders on the estate that um, don't let people with power and money and resources shut you down. You have a voice, you're entitled to use that voice and you're entitled to be heard. Thank you, Councillor Marshall. Would any other councillor like to speak on this motion? Councillor Nation. Thank you, Mayor. And on that note, Councillor Marshall, hopefully when we uh, develop Councillor Sipex historical space. Um, it may be a chance for people to reflect on the, uh, as you said, the uh, very disappointing process that got us to, to where we are and as to where the hub will be located, where it is and, and the size of, of what it is. And I commend Councillor Cusack for um, trying to squeeze as much, um, as much into as little, um, trying to cater for uh, everyone on the estate and the broader Flemington Travancore communities um, in reality is near impossible um, with the budget that's been allocated but obviously we, we recognise that's a, a council, uh, it's a decision of council and we must uh, progress um, from here and uh, as Councillor Marshall said it's um, 20 million is better than zero but I just would like us as a, a council and, and future councils going forward um, to remember this spend um, when we're considering equivalent projects or uh, greater projects in, in other areas that, that in reality cater for individuals and that are, that are more well off. Um, and I said at the time when the budget was reduced from, from 40 to 20 million that um, the estate has the most disadvantaged members of our community. It's got lowest net household wealth um, in our community, right down to the lowest car ownership in our community. And the, the Flemington hub is a place where um, 
those members can come together. Um, and in terms of self worth and, and, and personal worth, um, it's it's hopefully an area that inspires, educates and inspires um, all members of our community, but particularly the next generation and the youth. Um, and I would hate to think that uh, a decision made with a stroke of a pen um, before council last year um, subsequently devalues or, or ruins those individuals' um, self-worth and, uh, and yeah, their, their general well-being. Um, in terms of, um, and, and I say that both um, being disappointed at council's decision, but also disappointed at, that DHHS hasn't come to the table, um, right down to the fact that we're, they're knocking down all the Holland Court walk-ups for a net gain of, of 20 public housing units is, is, is in reality, in my opinion, embarrassing. Um, the fact that they're not contributing to the project is embarrassing. Um, and the fact that uh, probably like um, we've seen at the Ascot Vale Estate, that it, it drags on and the, and the project scope gets uh, smaller and smaller. Um, yeah, but it is what it is. Um, I just hope that um, by not providing as much as I think we should as a council to the people who are going to use the hub and need it the most, I hope that it doesn't impact as much on our vulnerable me on the vulnerable members of our community. Thank you, Councillor Nation. Would any other councillor like to speak on this item? No, I will put that to the vote. All those in favour? That is carried unanimously. We are now up to item 10.3 on the agenda. So I will just allow some time for Councillor Marshall and Councillor Sharp to leave the room. For those who weren't tuned in at 6.30, Councillor Sharp and Councillor Marshall um, have both declared conflicts of interest um, in relation to item 10.3 on the agenda, so won't be participating in this debate. And so they have now stepped out of the room. So item 10.3 on the agenda is a report on Mooney Valley Flood Study 2020, resolution to proceed to informal community consultation. Councillors, do I have a motion, please? Councillor Sipek. Happy to be with the officer's recommendation, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Sipek. And do I have a seconder? Councillor Sarais. Councillor Sipek, would you like um, to... I think this is very procedural. We'll be going out to consultation. I think the item speaks for itself. Thank you, Councillor Sipek. Councillor Sarais. No, as Councillor Sipek has said, it's really just a procedural motion about um, getting community feedback, having consultation with regards to the property owners and occupiers in the... Uh, flooding or the region that could be subject to flooding within the Mooney Valley Flood Study of 2020. Thank you, Councillor Sarais. Would any other councillor, Councillor Cusack? Um, I think it's worthwhile elaborating, especially for the people who are listening in, a bit about why this is such an important uh, process. The um, city of Mooney Valley has always traditionally been prone to some flooding. I mean, that's uh, the shape of the place. and. Uh, we can't get around the fact that we're surrounded by a river and uh, some fairly large creeks the, uh, and that natural runoff occurs. And in doing that, over a course of years, we've seen the landscape of Mooney Valley change. And we know that uh, you know, more building, um, l reductions in permeable ground cover, um, increased building structures uh, that create over overland flow paths and uh, put increasing pressure on the uh, capacity of the existing local drainage network to work. So this work is about spotting where the, uh, the hot spots, which sounds like a very odd use of the term when you're talking about flooding, uh, will occur or could be occurring and that how we might plan for the future to, uh, to do that. Um, I'll leave it at that except to say that this is not small fry. There are something like 4,000 uh, premises, houses basically, that, are, uh, that fall within the scope of this. That uh, Mooney Valley is, uh, is going to be subject to more issues related to climate change and, um, and the like 
and this is part of our preparation as per our uh, council resolution in um, late 2019, which looked at the declaration of an emergency around climate. And so the uh, report talks about some of those uh, particular places where attention is needed now, in Strathmore, uh, Mount Alexander Road, Mooney Ponds, and in Avondale Heights. I've deliberately left out the names of the streets so that people don't fall off their chair at home. But uh, as Councillor Sipek and Councillor uh, uh, Sarais have pointed out, that this is a matter that's going to community consultation, uh, but its background and the reason why is really, really critical. We've seen what uh, flooding looks like in New South Wales, Queensland and so on like that in recent times and, uh, and how it's emerging more and more as a significant issue in inner suburban areas. Thank you, Councillor Cusack. Would any other councillor like to speak? Councillor Gatchmarici. I will very, very briefly. Thank you to Councillor Cusack for expanding because that was what I wanted to make sure those who hadn't read the report in detail under heard and understood. The piece for me that I just wanted to make sure residents really um, were aware of is that there is flood modelling that models what we think will happen around the drains. Um, but the purpose, the purpose literally of the informal consultation is to understand what your experience as a resident is in flooding situations, in high rainfall situations compared to the model. Um, so that's a real opportunity for you to review the modelling, review the areas that we think have these issues. And if you don't have that experience or the opposite, you do have that experience and you're not in the model, then to make us aware of those um, concerns. Certainly um, the five areas that Councillor Cusack referred to are ones that we regularly get phone calls about as soon as it starts to rain. So I don't think it will come as a surprise to anyone in those areas that they're on the list. Thank you, Councillor Gauchimarici. Would any other councillor like to speak? No, in that case, I will put that to the vote. All those in favour? That is carried unanimously. We'll just wait now whilst we get back in Councillor Marshall and Councillor Sharp. Whilst we wait, for those who didn't hear earlier, we, this morning I was, uh, well not this morning, earlier in the meeting, we received this award. Um, the Leadership in the Public Sector Awards we were the winner, Human Centred Service Delivery Award. So for our Flemington Works, which is really good um, achievement for Mooney Valley. I know we were quite chuffed to win it. Um, and there's been a lot of work that went into this by a lot of our staff and it was a really good joint partnership. So presented that um, earlier in the night for those who have just joined in whilst we wait for the councillors to come back. Mayor, we were up against some extraordinary competition for that and it's a very prestigious award Absolutely. to have actually won. And uh, there are state government departments who uh, I think have got their nose out of joint because of the fabulous work that's been done by <laughs> a group of people down in Flemington. Thank you, Councillor Cusack. So we are now up to item 10.4 on the agenda, which is a response to a petition in Newsom Street, Ascot Vale. Councillors, do I have a motion? <laughs> Council Marshall. Um, thank you. I'd like to move a motion in the form of the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Marshall. And a second to Councillor Cusack. Councillor Marshall, would you like to speak on the motion, please? Uh, yes, look, I appreciate that this uh, is a difficult situation in some ways, and I um, understand the concerns of the residents. Uh, from the advice that we have received from officers, the situation, that, uh, well, the difficulty we have in this particular situation is that we have numerous examples of this exact problem around Mooney Valley. And I've also been advised by council officers that in all of those other situations, it's council has maintained a consistent position and has said that it's a responsibility of the property owners to actually be maintaining their nature strips. And I understand again, uh, in your particular ward that Valley Lakes had an example of this, uh, the same situation. And uh, it's interesting too that I've had since the petition, people could become aware of the petition, other people saying that they've got accessibility issues, uh, even people with detached dwellings who say, well, I've got a, you know, a long, uh, long way that I have to move my mower around. So I think that the difficulty is that if 
we make an exception in this particular situation that we will be inundated with requests uh, based on previous experience and previous requests. And again, the, the difficulty is we can't turn around and say, well, yes, we'll do yours, but no, we're not going to do Valley Lakes or no, we're not going to do whichever particular street it is. So that's the real challenge we have here and the challenge for the resource implications too, because again, if you think about the number of nature strips that we have in Mooney Valley, uh, if council was going around having to maintain and mow all of the nature strips, or even a significant proportion of them, where there were accessibility issues, uh, it would be a very significant uh, resource drain. So we need to be consistent and fair. So while I certainly understand uh, what the residents are concerned about, I'm mindful that if we create an exception in this particular instance, then it really will open the floodgates. And that is a big concern in a situation where we have significant financial constraints as it is. So um, again, I understand that the residents will be disappointed about this outcome, but uh, in this situation, I don't see that we've got any other option. Thank you, Councillor Marshall. Councillor Cusack. Thank you, Mayor. Just want to echo, obviously, some of the lines that, and points that have been made by uh, Councillor Marshall. Uh, I also note that in the report that uh, Council is actually active in the area, we, uh, where there are rear nature strips to properties, we're actually maintaining and mowing those. So we have accepted a significant responsibility at Ascot Chase. I think that um, one of the other issues that somehow gets lost in this is that there is, while this might be uh, council property, the there is a straight and direct benefit to landholders uh, who have these properties and through having a nature strip and the potential uh, that a good nature strip brings with it to a house and its value. I often hear questions about development uh, reducing value of properties, but there is one active way that properties can be uh, up, uh, well, kept and maintained in terms of value. There is also our council offering opportunities to look at other options for nature strips. And uh, there is clearly an opportunity here maybe for the residents to have some thinking or do some thinking about changing that nature strip its appearance, planting it out in different ways, and uh, and doing that, and sh and uh, council would be most uh, happy, I'm sure, to uh, take a representation from uh, the local residents down there to uh, find out what can be done and uh, what plants might be able to be put in to uh, beautify the area, reduce the need for mowing, and maybe just the occasional. Uh, little bit of maxi crop or something on there. Uh, so I support the uh, motion. Thank you, Councillor Cusack. Would any other councillor, Councillor Nation? Uh, thank you, Mayor. And I was going to uh, pick up on that point, Councillor Cusack, because we did last, I think last year move our um, nature strip landscaping policy. And that is exactly the point, as you mentioned, for, for those who might not be able to um, maintain their nature strip uh, that often for those uh, residents that might be transient and might be out for months at a time. Um, we have a policy that lets you know what you can do with your nature strip. Um, all you got to do is pump into Google or the Mooney Valley website, uh, nature strip landscaping policy. Um, there's some things you can do without even notifying council, so um, drought tolerant grasses and small plantings. Um, it, it, it's quite a, an impressive um, uh, policy that we move because it even includes things like planter boxes and uh, there's a whole range of options and it, it, it does get you to um, think not just what will help beautify the street but also what, um, what you can maintain and so don't just think of a nature strip as just purely being um, grass. Um, so I'd really encourage those residents who might um, who may have signed the petition and um, may be worried about maintaining the nature strip every two weeks to, to please look into it because it's a, a fantastic offering that, um, that Council uh, really took a lead with in this, in this space in terms of Melbourne Councils um, and it, if this situation is not more relevant I don't know what is. So um, again, uh, nature strip landscaping policy, just uh, pump it into Google. Um, it's got a, a quick PDF and also some further information to click through. 
also uh, mvcc.vic.gov.au slash nature strip so i'm not just plugging google uh there is a direct link there as well thank you councillor nation I have to pay for the ads if they click through so just go would, straight there would any other councillor like to speak on this item no i'll put that to the vote all those in favor that is carried unanimously Item 10.5 on the agenda is the Council Plan 2017 to 21 Quarter 2 Progress Report for 2019-20. Do I have a motion, please? Councillor Sarais? I uh, move the officer's recommendation as printed. Thank you, Councillor Sarais. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Sipek. Councillor Sarais, would you like to speak on the item? I will, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, this report is a report to council and the community on the progress towards delivering the council plan 2017 to 21, known as the council plan through the 2019-20 annual work plan for quarter two. An annual work plan is prepared each financial year to deliver the council plan. Officers then monitor and report on the progress through three quarterly reports and an end of year report. This report provides an update on our progress for the period 1 July 2019 to 31 December 2019. A snapshot of our progress towards delivering the Council Plan is provided and indicates that we're making good progress. We still have more to deliver in 2020-2021 and the fourth and final year of the Council Plan. Just some of the issues that I'll, I'll mention are of the 168 total actions scheduled for completion in 2019-20, 2% are complete, 84% are on track, 3% are not yet started and 11% are off track. Of the 22 major initiatives adopted as part of the 2019-20 budget, none have, none have been completed. However, 96% are on track and 4% is off track due to slight changes to the project's scope. On a positive note, the key achievements for the second quarter of 2019-20, and I'll just mention a couple of them, it included um, over the past six months more than 40 business workshops and events have attracted close to 700 attendees. These events included the weekly ACORN co-working space at Sam Merrifield Library, small business Victoria workshops, small business mentoring, Australian tax office workshops and several neighbourhood business networking events. Three green living and smart garden workshops were delivered along with the quarterly schools environment network meeting and the celebration for the five schools that participated in the 2019 schools wipe out waste. The quarterly school environment network newsletter and the monthly green living newsletters were circulated to over 2000 contacts and residents. It also included the beautification works around the Union Road Activity Centre that were completed and Council's new corporate website went live on the 22nd of November 2019. The website has improved navigation and functionality and a chatbot called Kelly, which has been programmed to answer more than 200 customer questions. So the next stage of the website will include 3D models of houses so residents can more easily comprehend which permits they require. So. If people want to look at that report a bit more in, um, intensely, they can, but uh, there's some great outcomes there and the council's going in the right direction. Thank you, Councillor Sarais. Councillor Sipek. Um, I think Councillor Sarais gave us a comprehensive report and um, I tend to agree with pretty much everything that you said and um, I don't think I've got much to say. Thank you, Councillor Sipek. Would any other councillor like to speak on this item? Oh, Councillor Cusack. So when Council, uh, after it was elected um, a long time ago now, uh, came into being, we agreed to a four-year plan and we agreed to a number of plans, uh, annual plans that uh, checked in on that four-year plan to make it actually ap happen. And this is the 14th time over the life of this Council that uh, a report like this has come to us. And I think that, uh, I, well, I sorry, I have to agree with Councillor Sarais that it paints a pretty good picture. There are, of course, always some potential slippages, but um, in some of those, there is actually some very good reasons why. And as usual, it's, uh, it's not uh, because of, uh, well, 
and the and the with diligence and, and hard work of our officers, we're expecting to get most of those back on track anyway. But the uh, and uh, I think that the uh, shopping list of uh, of outcomes that uh, Council Sir Race gave us points to very effectively what Council does, and it and it gives that broader picture about what we do. And I've often been asked, you know, as we all are. What, it, what does council do? And this is actually the bread and butter stuff that shapes what happens every day with people's lives over and above the incidental, which seems to consume most of our lives. But the, uh, and, I, and I just, I suppose I want to uh, um, just go on a little bit further with, uh, with some of that reporting. And, uh, and note also that the link and the important part of this is that it's tied to 2040, our plan for Moody Valley for the next 20 years, and it's a critical part of that. And so when we talk about fair, we talk about it in Aboriginal language of Quente Budup, and we talk about things like the lab program, which has been a resounding success, both in Nidri and Moody Ponds and Avondale Heights. Now, 36 people have attended this uh, from in those three locations. It's targeted at people with disabilities, some of them very, very complex. And the program has actually flowered to provide a whole lot of respite opportunities for its parent, for the parents and guardians, which is a lovely spin-off. And I think also things like uh, making sure as we progress through our, uh, our work, the DDA compliance, disability um, uh, compliance, is there for all of our uh, pavilions and so on like that. So we've been marking them off as we go. The Strathmore Sports Pavilion, Mooney Valley Athletics uh, and the Miliara Integrated uh, Learning and Development Centre. And so too we've moved to things around greening our city and the likes of that. I, I recommend very much that people who want to get a handle on what Mooney Valley really means, where it's going to, what it's done and why you should rejoice in the place need to have a look at the council report. Thank you, Councillor Cusack. Would any other councillor like to speak on this item? No, I will put that to the vote. All those in favour? That is carried unanimously. Item 10.6 on the agenda is the financial performance report, December 2019. Councillors, do I have a motion? Councillor Sipek? Thank you. And second, Councillor Sarais. Councillor Sipek. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. This um, was deferred uh, at our last meeting to this meeting to getting advice from the Audit Committee. And the Audit Committee has wrote to us back in draft form saying that they're quite happy and comfortable with the financial report. And uh, they also just um, added a few little, um, few little points to uh, to the council, advise council that whilst it is forecast that the 2019-2020 year end result will be an annual surplus generally in line with the adopted budget, the committee is conscious of early advice that the significant savings will need to be made by council in subsequent budgets to protect the financial stability of the municipality, recognising that it is likely to involve making very difficult decisions by council. So. Um, so I'm happy to move the officer's recommendation with the foresight that we are in a position now with, um, well, another example is, is this new waste bin. I mean, who's going to end up paying for it? Probably council again. So we're going to have to start making tough decisions and they're going to get uh, just tougher and tougher every single year. Thank you, Councillor Sipek. Councillor Sarais. Just a couple of things to be noted. Um, Council's overall financial position as at the 31st of December 2019 is a forecast of a surplus of 15.7 million, which is 1.5 million favourable to the adopted budget. And at this stage of the financial year, management doesn't foresee any reason why the actual result will vary materially from the adopted budget. Uh, Council Capital Works Program annual forecast is 59.6 million compared to the adopted budget of 82.2 million. The reduction is due to already known project carryovers to 2020-21. 
And Council resolved at the ordinary meeting held on the 10th of December to amend the capital budget to 64.8 million and the revised budget will be reflected in the January financial report. Uh, the grant register status report provides an update to the status of Council's grant submission and it's good to note that Council has been successful in receiving $3.2 million worth of grant funding. So that's a great outcome. Thank you, Councillor Sarais. Would any other councillor like to speak on this item? No, I will. Oh, sorry, Councillor Sharp. Uh, just a quick note to thank the officers and the CEO for all their hard work behind the scenes in getting these uh, financial report to us. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sharp. Any other councillor? No, I will put that to the vote. All those in favour? That is carried unanimously. Item 10.7 on is next on the agenda and it is notices of motion quarterly report. Councillors, do I have a motion? Councillor Gauci Marici and seconded by Councillor Cusack. Thank you, Councillor Gauci Marici. Um, I'd like to move the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Gauci Marici. And sorry, and yes, you're seconding. And I'm happy. Yes, apologies. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Gatchamichi, would you like to speak on the item? Um, this is actually one that is fairly self-explanatory. Um, when there are issues that occasionally come up and councillors um, do those as notices as of motion, we just track which ones have been actioned and which ones haven't, and the table that supports that shows you where everything that we've raised is at. So, Thank you, Councillor Gatchamichi. Councillor Cusack? Um, I don't think there's anything to add, uh, Mayor. It, this is procedural. Thank you, Councillor Cusack. Would any other councillor like to speak on this? No, I will put that to the vote. All those in favour? That is carried unanimously. The next item of business is notices of motion and we have one tonight. Notice of motion number 2020-06, replacement of trees along Buckley Street, Essendon, following the level crossing removal project. And I call on Councillor Sarais to present her notice of motion. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, it is my intention to move that Council writes to the Major Transport Infrastructure Authority, formerly known as the Level Crossing Removal Authority, or LXRA, requesting mature trees be planted along Buckley Street, Essendon, replacing the 100 plus year old trees that were removed through the level crossing project. Thank you, Councillor Sarais. Do I have a seconder for this motion? Councillor Nation. Councillor Sarais, would you like to speak on your motion, please? I will uh, briefly. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, as we all know that uh, the Level Crossing Removal Authority at the time removed some substantially large trees along uh, Buckley Street to make way for their project to deliver um, an upgrade to the Level Crossing. However, I know the passion behind this council and how we respect our trees and we try to keep them um, in their state and in their condition and without being removed and it's quite a, a passionate subject in this council and our tree canopy is important to us. So I'm just going to hold up the before pictures, if they can capture that on the camera, um, as to what was on Buckley Street. And these are two pictures of what the current uh, authority believe are mature trees, which look nothing at all like what was there. I'm not saying that they should plant massively high trees, but these are a bit of an insult compared to what was on the site on Buckley Street prior to the destruction and removal of those beautiful mature trees that were along there. So I'm requesting that we write to them to at least have the decency to plant some grand mature trees along that uh, strip of Buckley Street and hope this council will support that. Thank you, Councillor Sarais. Councillor Nation. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Yes, very happy to support Councillor Sarais and thank you for um, bringing this notice of motion before Council. Um, one of the probably more depressing things, Councillor Sarais, is that some trees were removed that didn't actually need to be removed. So 
and I guess that was the uh, the because the project was uh, progressing with such with such haste to get it done by in a certain time frame, and uh, and the plans were obviously evolving um, as the works uh, as the works progressed. And, you, and when you actually drive down, you can see some of those new plantings. Um, where trees were removed, uh, actually areas that were untouched in the in the work zone, um, and that's you know that's probably the most depressing thing is not all of them had to go. Yes, you know if one or two had to go, um, but the fact that all of them were wiped out, um, yeah, is, is um, really disappointing. But that was the uh, the project as it was, and getting it done uh, in a certain time to match up with a, a state election, and um, our poor trees uh, copped the brunt of it. Thank you, Councillor Nation. Would any other councillor like to speak on this motion? Mm -hmm. Councillor Cusack. Um, councillor Sorais, I support the spirit of your motion, but I do uh, contest with you that these were 100-year-old trees. I, uh, I don't recall that that could be absolutely right, certainly not in all occasions, because I remember that whole median strip being put in, maybe, eh? no way, not 100 years ago, in the, um, maybe in the last 20, 25 years. Can I get a point of clarification? How old are you, Councillor Kuzak? Councillor's place. I still keep a boyish heart. Um, so I just, uh, so I, I I think that that doesn't serve your motion that well. However, I do agree that uh, mature trees need to be and could have been preserved, possibly, but uh, where they have been uh, removed, that uh, some additional consideration be given at this point to uh, looking at, if not all, all of them being replanted out with matures, at least some, so that we can kind of get back to where that look was at the time. Um, noting also, though, that not necessarily uh, eucalypts like those would be always the best tree to plant down a median strip like that. Uh, I'm not sure about the uh, species involved, but uh, just uh, considering issues around safety and so on. Thank you, Councillor Cusack. Would any other councillor like to speak on this item? Councillor Sipek. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, yes, I, I support your, um, your um, notice of motion, councillor, but uh, I also do um, think that these trees aren't 100 years old. When you come up to East Keelor and you have a look at some trees that were planted 40 years ago, they're about 10 times the size of these ones. But, uh, not, not, but not, not, not to take away from what you're saying, what they did plant, I think, is an embarrassment. For, for, a, for a company like that, who probably sort of made quite a nice little profit out of this, they couldn't spend the extra couple of dollars in putting in some better plants. Like, seriously, that is a disgrace what they've put in there. I mean, they're toothpicks, what they've put in there. And I, I wholly support you to writing letters, not only just to them, but to anyone and everyone who would listen to state, federal, any upper house, lower house, the whole lot of them. These, these are embarrassing trees. Thank you, Councillor Sipek. Would any other councillor like to speak on this item? No, I will put that to the vote. All those in favour? That is carried unanimously. The next item on the agenda is urgent business. Now, councillors, do we have any items of urgent business tonight? No? We'll move on then to delegates report. Is there anyone in their position as a delegate that they would like to report on something tonight? No. Now we don't have any confidential reports on the agenda tonight so that does conclude our meeting. Thank you to the members of the public um, for coming along tonight and for those who are watching on the live streaming at home. I now declare this meeting closed. Thank you very much. <laughs>